Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, another X's and O's video. We are So this question comes from Matthew Guion, Coach Guion, 88, with a little underscore, is having a week on the quarterback school. If you're taking suggestions for new X's and O's videos, what are your thoughts on the shallow cross concept? Matthew, love the question, love the engagement also on the channel, whether it's through Twitter, whether it's through the comments, I'll do my best to get back to each and every one of them. As for this suggestion, you got it. Shallow cross. Uh, this to me is an old school West Coast centric play. Uh, be really blunt right out the gate. This is not one of my favorite plays. So I'm going to do my best to be objective in describing how it's usually installed or was installed uh, when it was run a little bit more consistently. And then talk about maybe why I didn't love it, where maybe some holes are in, in my understanding of the read, the footwork, the logic behind it, and then kind of show what this play has kind of evolved into for most people. So shallow cross to me refers to a basically shallow under, similar to a drive concept in the West Coast world where you're running from one side of the formation across to the other side of the field, usually five-ish yards, four to six. And if it is zone, you can usually throttle down once you cross the tackle box. So versus zone, you're going to settle up. Versus man, you're going to keep running in a flat line. And that really is the shallow part of it. Then old school shallow cross is tethered to usually a deep hook over the ball or middle hook, depending on how you want to say it, a deep sit, usually 10-ish yards right over the ball. And so depending on where you are and how this play is read, it can be read a few different ways. Either way, it's usually either the shallow first with the deep hook or the deep hook with the shallow. And then with that, there are usually perimeter routes that are kind of tethered to the base way that it's run. So it's usually run with an alert post to the front side and with like a 10 yard, 10 to 12 yard hook post curl on the back side with a check swing from the back out to that curl side. And so that's kind of the basic underarching structure of what it is. Now to me, why I don't necessarily love it is because it's a good, it's a decent zone play. I think it's a good quarters zone play, but how much true quarters zone are you seeing? Uh, you know, probably not that much, maybe some as a changeup. If anything, you're probably seeing more uh, match quarters, those types of bracket-ish type stuff, depending on what level you're at. Now, maybe if you're at lower levels, you're seeing true base quarters. Maybe if you're in the red zone, you're seeing some iteration of red four, red quarters, uh, even almost like a red two. It can still work as far as the potential alert. But again, to me, it's true. It's a true zone call because if you if you catch man, you really only have one and a half good options. You got that shallow coming across, and then you've got that deep hook over the ball, which really kind of becomes kind of a hook, and then you run away back to the side you came from. So we'll show it in a bunch of drawings. To me, I just don't think it has a lot of great man answers, really tight coverage answers, but there is a nice element of an alert post versus quarters, and there you do get a runaway, so it's better than nothing. But I think that there are just better ways to do it. And that's what I'm talking about when I say better ways to do it. Because even within that structure of that play, the read, the pure progression element of it, to me is choppy. And I'll show it in a bunch of different images. And then when I alluded to earlier as far as better ways to do it, I think better ways to do it nowadays are just iterations of mesh. And so mesh should probably be its own video. I'll show how mesh kind of began to creep into at least anecdotally my experience playing in the league. It wasn't called mesh, but it was mesh or the bones of it were mesh. So we'll talk about that. And that was really less West Coasty and more digit world. And so you can kind of see some of the kind of uh, limbs of trees of different offenses going in different directions. But old school West Coast shallow cross to me, a bit of a dinosaur play. Not that it was never a good play. I just think that there are better things now. And so when we look at some of these images, you'll be able to say, hey, you know, that's a tough read for a quarterback to go one, two, three, all the way back to the other side of the field. Or, hey, if we catch certain variation of man coverage or match coverage, all of a sudden we don't have a whole lot of great winners. So different ways to construct this thing. But I think you're really going to dig it. Thank you for the question. Let's get into the images. So first one here is from Matthew's question. We'll go through the, exactly what the play is. Eagle is 10 personnel, West Coast world spread, right? The formation, 76 is the pass protection. That just is a solid pass pro. And we're going to get a hot off the first backer to the strong side. That's what you see this hot here. Again, I appreciate drawings without the defense just so we can clean and focus on the concept. 
Eagle Shallow Cross tells you who's running the Shallow Cross, and then everybody else has to know what they have on Shallow Cross. So again, just going through the reads here, or really, let's go through the construction of the play first. The Shallow. There's that Shallow Cross. Look at that, four to six yards. There's that zone image. Okay, Different teams have different landmarks for where you can settle down versus zone. Okay, So we're settling down versus zone right there on that dot. Versus man, we're going to run away. Here's that deep hook over the ball. So right over the ball, 10 to 12 yards. If it's man, that's what that dotted line is, you can run away. So if we catch man, we've got him coming across and out and back across. Now, the other thing about man, and I've played this in a bunch of different systems, these reads can sometimes change. So this says one to two versus in many teams or for many teams. If it was man, the read all of a sudden went shallow one, hook, runaway two. Just because it almost happened faster, you could kind of see it. It would go here, and then it almost operated as a clear for that second level to come out. So potentially the read changing man versus zone. But again, this is a zone call. Next, we've got the number three out here. So with this number three, this is going to start to bleed into maybe some of the issues I have with this play. So let's just say what the book says. And okay, we're going to go pretend you play football by the book. You don't. Okay, but you learn these things. You need to learn it by the books. This is like learning grammar. You got to know the rules before you can break the rules for all you old school English majors out there. One, two, three. Let me say that again. One in the middle, two all the way over here on the right side, and then three is going to be all the way back. Ten yards. Okay, so just go through the math here. This is 10 to 12. This is four to six yards deep. You know, shoot 10, 15 yards across the field. Then this is 10 yards, the number three route, the number three in the read. So you're going to take seven steps from gun. And that's the other thing. This is a seven-step drop. This takes forever. Okay, seven steps from gun. You're going to hitch one or no hitch one, hitch two, and then come all the way back three to the left side. That's a lot. Pause for dramatic effect. Seven-step drop. One, two, three. Just try to go through it wherever you're watching this video. Over the middle, to the right, to the left. It's hard to do. Okay, now the other part about this play, and really one of my favorite parts about this play, is just the alert. So we've got an opportunity versus quarters to be able to hit this alert. I've seen it thrown versus zero as well in the red area. Okay, the other part about this post is that it's a learned outside release more here versus any sort of cloud. What does that mean? That means we must go outside the corner and it converts to a fade. Why? Because a cloud is not going to be versus quarters and you're not going to get the ball, but we need you to turn that corner's eyes because we've got this shallow running right to him. We can't have this guy eject you at the line of scrimmage, turn his eyes inside and blow this cat up. Okay, so that, that in essence is the play, shallow cross. It's got the deep hook. We've got the shallow. We've got the backside pivot or hook, and then it's alert with a post to the front side. Again, issues with why I dislike it. One, two, three, over, over the ball, to the right, to the left. They're not on the same side. Normally, I think this play is a little bit better if it would be deep hook here and then E shallow cross. But then if that's the case in the true bones of it, this would be the post and this would be the pivot. But I personally would prefer just how my brain works to have this be the hook, this be the shallow, so then you can go one, two, three, all in your area, and I would push this to like 15 so that it would time up with the feet. But again, you know, Bill Walsh didn't ask me. Okay, those types of things. Okay, so let's look at some more images. All right, next, this is from my old Green Bay days. Okay, this is base formation. So we're going to get a halfback out here. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, we're going to be, that's 21 personnel. Wide right is the formation. 76 is the pass pro. Now it's X shallow cross. So we've got the shallow here, the hook, deep hook over the ball. Again, the same coaching points, right? Man to man, run away, alert, outside release. Right? It's the exact same play. Just a different way to get there, different personnel. It's going to cause a different formation. But it, once you learn how to play this play, it's simple play. The other thing about it I didn't talk about on the last one was just the hot here. So this hot is a hot vertical peak. So as he's running, if this linebacker back in the day, a Sam, whatever, this linebacker to this side were to blitz off the edge, either outside or in the B or in the C, he's going to 
on his path, turn and run and look, and you have to put it on him. A, good, a really good player will keep that thing vertical if he knows he's hot. You run, look, and that's your throw on the hot. So not my favorite hot in the world either. You get in all sorts of trouble if you get a defensive lineman popping right in that area. So again, don't love the read. One, two, three, like that. Don't love the hot. Don't love having to ask our halfback to run a 10-yard hook, you know, depending on who that guy is. But there it is, shallow cross. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. Then if you want even more videos like this, you definitely need to hop over and check out all the quarterback school courses. We offer a number of different courses. The link is in the description to the video. Again, if you like these kind of deep dive X's and O's, really beyond scheme and more teaching you how to teach these types of plays, depending on if you're a coach or if you're a quarterback, how to play these types of plays. There are a lot of great options at the quarterback school courses. Get over there, check those out. I appreciate it. As for this one, let's keep it going. So now we're going to jump into the digit world. Man, this for me is old Detroit, Mike March days. Okay, so again, just walk through what exactly this is. This 11 personnel, bunch right is the formation, zip is the motion, scat right is the pass pro, it's the same. That's solid protection, hot off front side linebacker coming is the easiest way to explain it. 0-22, stop. Okay, this is how they ran their R iteration of this play. So you can see here, here's the zero. That's the shallow coming across. Again, zone, sit down, man is what that dotted line is. Okay, so there's your runaway. Okay, we're going to get that deep hook over the ball. Okay, so that's the bones of the play, right? You know how to play shallow cross. Now you can play this play. Again, you can see the reads here. One, two. So the, the thing about it is, this to me is a slightly better and worse play all at the same time. We lose the post option, which I love, but we get another pick. So now this should start looking like mesh to people. You know, This is essentially what mesh is to a certain degree, the bones of mesh here with this little rail or shoot, depending on how you want to say it. Now it's not true rail because technically he's got pass protection and scat. Six person solid protection. He's got that will weak linebacker over here. But the bones of this, this is where you start to see these things bleed together. Okay, so let's go through shallow cross one more time. Here's the shallow. Here's the deep hook. That really is the bones of shallow cross. But now let's go mesh. So we've got this. That's the mesh. And then I think most mesh is run with a deep hook or something behind it. There it is. And a lot of people love to run it with this rail or bullet or shoot. So you can see these things bleeding together. And this is where I think the play gets better in most standards because you get double, you get two picks. You get the, the mesh element of the second two right here. So the Y on the sh shallow coming back, he's got a chance to rub or pick. We've got another chance for a rubber pick here versus man. And we're coming out underneath it with that zero. So you can see to me, this play is a, you know, a cocktail of shallow cross and the start of mesh. Now this next one, same offense, different way to get there. Quads, 10 personnel, gun double right, so formation, squeezes the formation, brings a condensed split. Gone is five person pass protection. Zero 22 is the same play. So here's the zero, here's the two, here's the next two, but now there's no stop on it, right? So normally there would be a stop there on that last play that we had, it was zero 22 stop. So he'd stop there. So now it's normal two. So now we really get two full picks. So we get two full picks and then we get a bullets call. So I'm a big fan of this bullets play. This is a uniquely Mike Martz play in my world. I'm sure other people ran it. This to me is what most people refer to as a rail nowadays or just a go from the backfield. So he's going to get out here and go. And this really actually won me the job at Detroit in one period in a blitz pickup period, throwing this, being able to throw this bullets concept. So a special spot in my heart. And then an F4. It's a unique one with a burst four. But let's talk about just the spacing. All right. So here's the shallow. Here takes the place of the deep hook with the four, with really a, a, my preferred way to get to a four with a little burst up and in. So this thing times out a little bit better. And they put a little, added this element of bullets to it, which is really that rail or go, and now this is the hot. Two lines makes an H, you're welcome. You can throw it here, or you can throw it down the field versus man. So you get an opportunity for a double rub. So we got pick, 
pick here to be able to hit this bullet route or rail down the sideline. If that's not there, we've got the shallow coming across. Now we're in the shallow cross. Then we've got one right over the ball with the four. So again, it's not the same play, but the bones of it are the same. You can play this play the same. This, to me, now is really where you start getting into some better iterations of mesh. Some real super rub, super pick plays. Next version of a similar type of play. Again, this is the, the benefits to me of, of being in the digit world. These are all the same play. We just get there a bunch of different ways, different people doing the same routes. So again, let's just quickly talk about the bones of shallow cross. Here comes the shallow, and there's going to be something over the ball. Here, it's a four. Burst four because he's in tight. First true, true shallow cross. It's that deep hook. Runaway. Okay, but now we add the bullets. And I like this bullets even better. Why? Because of who's doing it. F, usually the third wide receiver. So instead of asking your back to do it, you can come back here. Let him pause. Look at that. In Mike Mart's handwriting. Pause. Let these two guys go. This is really a double pick, right? So we... First is the burst, second is the two, the shallow. So we get this, this, and then we're coming out right behind it. Looking as we go, getting that rail. If that's not there, we've got the shallow to the over the ball. Bunch of different ways to get there out of 11 and 10 personnel. Love it. Here's that same play in Detroit, except now it's with our two minute call. We just called it bullets. Again, this is the bullet route. But at the end of the day, it's shallow cross with something over the ball. Again, they prefer to four versus that deep hook, but it could be the exact same thing. You can also see how where these double picks are coming in here. So you obviously that the coaching point here that go, gets goes, goes sideways a little bit is who's who in the zoo as far as who's under, who's over. So usually in the digit world, it was the zero. He knew he was always under, and then the twos knew they were over. But really, I've done it different ways, different places. At the high school level, when we ran mesh, I always had the person on the right over, the person on the left under. We, did, we didn't major in mesh, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But having the capacity to do both is probably preferable, especially at the higher levels. But you can see the bones here of how this, to me, is shallow cross and mesh and the best of what was bullets is rail got unbelievable runaways versus man, right? There's no complaints. Well, where should we go versus man? We've got a great winner here. It's got a chance for two picks, both early and down the field. We've got a runaway through two picks again, right there. And then we've got an in runaway with a burst release. And then if we see these guys flash just for some reason, they've got a chance to pop open too. But you can see here, there, there's no option to settle down, right? They must keep running. There, those are guys that are going in there trying to lay shoulders on people accidentally on purpose. Okay, so to me, this is a better play than old school shallow cross because we've got the multiple options versus man, but acknowledging the fact that you lose that post. Now, could you maybe you know move this guy out and run post, or could you maybe put this guy on the other side over here and run post? Then you've got a great option. You got almost mills and a post quarters alert and a great man option. So. To me, that's how I like to do it. Doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. Doesn't mean it's, you know, there weren't deficiencies in my thinking as well. I just love having that post alert versus certain coverages versus zero. Also having some great runaways versus man and some great settle up opportunities in zone. So that is shallow cross. Again, old school, you can see it. The shallow cross, the deep hook, the backside pivot with the alert post. I think a better way to do it and the way that most people do it nowadays is more meshy. Uh, you know, intentional there with the multiple rubs, the picks, uh, blending that in with either the rail or the shoot or something else as far as a good hot option. But again, the deficiencies for me with old school shallow cross are just not great versus man. Now, if you're just an unbelievable play caller or you know you're going against country zone, spot drop zone, uh, it's certainly a simple, easy read, nice little triangle read for the quarterback. Again, I think there are better ways to do it. I don't love the one, two, three back to the other side. I think it's unnecessarily difficult. But uh, understanding kind of the bones of what that thing looked like as far as the timing of it with seven step drops and things not making sense to me. Uh, really tough to get all the way back to that backside number three, in my opinion, how it was originally constructed. So there are better ways to do it. 
Uh, mesh is certainly an element of it. I think incorporating that bullet or rail makes it even better to give it good man options. But again, if you can somehow construct it to also have a post quarter zero answer, I think it's that much better of a play. So if you have other suggestions for X's and O's concepts, please let me know. I certainly had fun with this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you disagree. I appreciate you hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.